Hi everyone, I'm Simon from Homesite and today we're going to be looking at the brand new two-year integration. Let's go! So Home Assistant have put out a latest update. We're now in October 2021, so they have released 10.1. And actually, we're now on 10.2. But it, what does that mean? It means that the two-year integration that we've used for such a long time has now broken. It's gone. It's no longer compatible. And that's because two-year two are no longer supporting that. And they are using their later API. Now, nothing scary, especially if you've used the beta v2 integration before, because actually it's the same process. All you need to do is install the new integration. Now, you will need to register as a developer account with Tuya, but it's not that difficult, and I'm going to take you through it in this video. So, I hope you liked this video. I hope you subscribe to my channel, and if you're interested in what I'm doing, then please check me out on Instagram as well. So, if you use the Tuya new integration previously, it would have been via hacks. So, the first thing we're going to have to do is remove it. Now, I recommend, first of all, you go into configuration, integrations, and you can see there's this two-year v2 integration and i'm going to delete that and i'm going to come into hacks and just to keep it tidy i'm going to remove this repository as well i'm going to uninstall that and that's gone obviously when you install stuff with hacks it asks you to restart clearly when you install when you deinstall stuff or uninstall stuff it doesn't look like you do have to which is nice so next, I am currently running version 9.7, so that's September, the seventh release in September of 2021. So we have to upgrade to the newest version, and at the moment it's 10.2. So I'm simply going to hit the update button there. I'm not going to create a backup because I've, I create backups manually and um, automatically anyway before I make any major changes. So just to speed that up, I've not created a backup. If you aren't creating backups, then I really recommend you do, especially for those running on Pis with SD cards. Those SD cards can be a little bit flaky. Um, I had one die on me recently, actually, um, after a whole after a year, so it's not too bad, I don't think. Um, but it was pretty easy for me to then download a new version, chuck in a new SD card, and put the uh, the latest backup on, and I didn't lose any data at all. Well, very minimal data anyway. Whilst this is updating, of course, there's a great opportunity to scroll down a little bit, check out the rest of my channel, subscribe to it, of course, like this video, and even check me out on Instagram as well. So I'll just wait for everything to finish starting up, as it tells you down here. Some things may work, but it's still starting up on services, which is a pretty cool message, actually. I, uh, I quite like that one. I'm going to dismiss that. And jump into my integrations now for those of you who have possibly used the two year the previous two year integration which now will not be available in here so before you would have had if you'd searched whilst you were running nine point something nine point seven or anything before ten point um ten point x you would have seen two year and two year v2 now, I did have a message from a guy on Instagram, uh, Cooper's Custom Rings, I think he is. Check him out on Instagram, he makes some awesome custom rings. Um, he uh, he had a problem at this point. So I think he, he'd he moved from the, the old two-year integration to the new two-year integration, and his whole HA died, and he had to restore from backup, which is why backups are so important. Um, so make sure you have got a backup at this point. So I would certainly recommend you remove the old two-year custom integration before you proceed with the update to 10 point anything. Um, although I'm not sure if it's listed in a breaking change. In fact, I will have a look. So if you're not used to looking at release notes, every time that Home Assistant or pretty much any software developer puts a release out, they will put out a release note. They will say what's been added. Now, the Home Assistant ones are particularly good, if I may say so. Um, now, if you scroll down to the bottom, not only do it say the stuff that you it will add, it will say stuff that it will break. See this section here, breaking changes. Now, I'm just going to have a quick look, flick through. Oh, HomeKit's breaking. Interesting. Um, and it might not be the whole thing. It might be just a few minor things. So you can see here, we've got a bit for two year. Previous two API is no longer maintained by two year. Da, 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 da. If you use the integration before this release, you'll need to set up again from scratch. To do that, remove any existences, 
any existing instances from the integration dashboard. After that, use the documentation for setting up. Fine. So the old integration will not work. It shouldn't break it by just doing the upgrade. But so let's go ahead and find the new two year integration. So I'm going to come into configuration where I am now, add integration, search for two year. You can scroll down the list if you like. Now, this is going to ask for a few things. Now, if you've done, done the two year V2 integration, some of these steps will have already been done for you. Now, I am in the United Kingdom. Now, you need this two year IoT access ID. So if I get rid of this tab here, you can go to this page here. Now, if you haven't signed up for this before, you will need to sign up now. It is a class as a developer account, but you don't need to do any development. All you need to do is follow some simple steps, which I will show you. So I'm going to log in. Now, if you use the Smart Life or the two year app on your mobile phone, then it is a different password. If you don't assume that you have an account with this just because you've signed up for the two year app or the Smart Life app. Now, in here, once you're logged in, um, you can set up an account, like I said, if you need to. If you come into cloud and development, you can create a new cloud project. Now, in here, you can call this whatever you like. You can give it a description. You don't have to. Industry, I'm just going to say smart home. I don't think that's actually makes a difference. This one here is important. You have to click smart home. If you click custom, then it won't work basically. Choose a data center. Now, these are basically where can you access your home assistant instance from or this, this API from. So and you can take as many as you like. And but obviously it's really important to take the ones that you where you are. So mine's likely to be the Western Europe one. But I'm just going to take them all just to be sure and hit create. Now, this will put most of the API services across for you. However, if you scroll down to the bottom, you want this device status notification. You'll need to add that in as well. Now, this does all say or some of these say time limited free or trial edition. Now, I've had this question multiple times. There's no reason why they will change this from being free. Um, they could, I suppose, potentially, but they certainly don't seem to have an ambition to at the minute. So now that you have created this cloud project, there's a couple of additional things you have to do. So that you'll notice that this access ID is the same as this, this access ID and this IoT access secret, and that's hidden behind these stars here. So you can simply hit that copy button and paste that through. But there is a couple of things you need to do first, like I said. So if you come into devices and link to your app account. So you hit add app account. If you open up your smart life app and click on me in the bottom right hand corner, you find the little barcode icon, which is up in the top right hand corner. You scan that QR code. And that's going to come up on your phone and saying, would you like to confirm the login? So you hit confirm login and that should say scan successfully. And you can see that's instantly added my two year account and my four devices. Fantastic. So that is what you should need to do here. Now, if we come back to our overview on this section, we can copy this account access ID. We can paste that in here. We can copy this access secret. We can paste that in here. In the account, this is really important. This isn't necessarily the account that you've logged into is the tier IoT platform. This is the one that you log into the, to the smart life or the two year app on your mobile phone. So mine is Simon at home site. Tech and my password. I'm not going to read out funnily enough. I hit submit. Hmm. Permission deny. That's not good. Let's just try that again. Ah, there you go. Just type the password wrong. Nice and easy. Cool. So now you can see my RGB video and my socket, and you can obviously assign these into different areas. And I'm just going to hit finish for now. So I have two devices in here now. 
and I can come into there and I can control my socket. Actually, my socket's not on at the moment, but I certainly can control this RGB video. And if I click into here, you can see I can change the colors and that will be changing the colors of that LED string. Now, one thing I tested previously on the previous version is once you add a device into your Smart Life app, does it appear? And it only takes a couple of seconds, um, and it's so that's pretty good. So that, as they go, is pretty painless. Now, in a previous video, when I talked about the two-year version two API, which is exactly what this is, so two have migrated from an old API, so an app, um, application programming interface, so a way that your your Smart Life devices can interact with something like Home Assistant or HomeBridge or Apple HomeKit or Google or Alexa or anything like that. Now, it's just the way that interacts and this gives you, um, it's faster, it gives you greater flexibility and there's a lot more functions in there. Now, one of the functions they haven't pushed out yet by the looks of it is this local control. Now, obviously in Home Assistant, it's the thing that we're crying out for. It's something that two years suggested that they were going to push out with this release that was going to be available at the end of Q3 of this year, which obviously is now, but they're not there yet. Um, they gave a recent update, which I put a video on um, on, on YouTube for, um, which said that they have spoken to their development team and there was a lot more to consider and they haven't quite got there yet. I am going to push them for another update to see where they are on that. Um, but at the minute, it's just uh, hurry up and wait. So I really hope you found that video useful. I hope that you've managed to get your two-year integration working and you can see and control all of your devices. I hope you've liked the video, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram as well. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Simon from Homesite.